do you remember a time in your life, especially during those earlier years when you were just a child, in which you had to go through something that you did not like, that you really did not enjoy experiencing? You've experienced a somewhat agitating or agonizing situation or multiple situations on multiple occasions in which you did not respond the way you wish you would either because you did not have the chance to respond the way you wanted to or because you just wanted to avoid that confrontation or that conflict and you also kept it all to yourself you did not share it with anyone whether because you did not have a healthy outlet to share or whether because you were too embarrassed about what happened so you did not want to share it with anyone or just simply because you were in a very dysfunctional household and you did not want to add to the burden of an emotionally unavailable parent. So you ate it all up. You soldiered your way through it. And you started internalizing what was happening to you unintentionally. Yeah, sounds familiar? Because that, that's where it all started. That's where all your blockages start, where all your coping mechanisms even start, where all your self-limiting beliefs began. And that's because you dishonored your inner child and you reinforced its repression when it needed it the most. But that was not really your fault. That's not what I'm trying to say. But at this point, what you were doing is that you were internalizing whatever was happening to you. And since you did not have a healthy outlet for it, no one was there for you. You as a child, you did not know any better and you had no one to tell you that it's okay to explain it to you, to make sense out of it for you. Your internal mechanisms took hold here. Your brain took it upon itself to make sense out of it for you and it assigned false definitions, false meanings to what you were experiencing. Because you had to know. You cannot live without making sense of everything around you. The most important prerequisite for survival is that you make sense out of your environment. You have to know what leads to what. You have to know that A leads to B and B leads to C. Because if you don't, if you don't know that if you were to do this, that would happen. If you would were to do that this would happen then you would rather just stay in bed all day and do nothing and that threatens your survival so much that your brain had to assign meanings for you why did i have to experience that pain why was i the one had to get hurt and your brain using your internal mechanisms started assigning definitions such as you're worthless you're a failure you're an embarrassment, you're unlovable, you don't deserve love, you don't deserve anything, you don't deserve this or that or this. And there, and then you're gonna be like, well, okay, now that makes sense. Now I understand why I had to experience this. Well, it's because I'm worthless. It's because I'm a failure. I don't deserve, you know, joy. I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve love. I don't deserve abundance. And that's how it all started. And as you grow older, you already grew so accustomed to dealing with things that way, to repressing, to dishonoring your inner child. And you carry on this with you for the longest time of your life. And you also carry those limitations and those blockages, which set your life in stone for you for the longest time ever until you realize what's happening or maybe you never do but you know something wrong is happening 
but by that point, at that point, this way of dealing with things and those limitations that this way, this approach have created has already become so infused with who you are that you don't know what is your true self, that you don't know how to even honor your inner child. How to stop repressing and limiting yourself. And as you carry these on with you, as you grow older for the longest time, you even, as you internalize them, as you internalize that pain and these negative self-concepts, these negative self-beliefs, you even start creating coping mechanisms to stop feeling bad about these negative self-impression impressions which are false by essence that your brain have created for you to make sense out of something that you could not make sense out of and these coping mechanisms for example if your brain had assigned the definition that you don't deserve love that you don't deserve joy that you deserve to be sad that you deserve the worst experiences then as you grow older you're gonna develop these mechanisms you're gonna find indulge in habits that are making you feel that way to extremes because if you can make yourself feel it to extremes if you can if you can by will while you're in control experience the extremity of a negative self-impression of a negative self-belief then that construct cannot hurt you that that then that false definition cannot hurt you and and stop you and threaten your survival in a way it's numbing yourself against those false definitions that were created by your brain and you do that because you want to live you don't want to think about them you don't want to feel the burden that heaviness of all of those definitions you've internalized, of all of that pain you've internalized. And so you even create coping mechanisms that only reinforce those limitations and those blockages. And as such, you remain stuck. You've set your life in stone and you keep feeling those same concepts, those same constructs over and over until you come to a point in which you want to heal. And that's why it's very, very important to honor, to start honoring your inner child, to express your truth. You've never got the opportunity to honor your inner child or you only seldom honored your inner child and that made you internalize that repression and, and infuse it with your essence. And that projects onto your external reality. And that's what I mainly want to discuss with you here today is how to even honor your inner child because as you keep doing this for the longest time of your life, you lose your true sense of self. You don't know what is your true self, what is your inner child. And from what I noticed from my experience is that many people also confuse the ego construct with the inner child construct. And that's because they are very similar. The ego is, in a sense, also a child. It's like a baby. It wants what it wants, and it desires what it desires, and it wants it now. And if it does not get it, it's going to throw a tantrum, and it's going to make you feel bad, and it's going to make you feel the worst. But a very noticeable difference is that when you experience such a situation, your ego would want to act in a way that makes you feel good momentarily, that gives you momentarily satisfaction, but on the long term, it makes you feel bad. It makes you feel regretful. It does not feel good on the long term. And it also creates coping mechanisms. Whatever you indulge in as part of the ego's desire, it makes you feel bad whether you do not indulge whether you do not entertain the ego's desire by not reacting according to what it's what it wants to do or by actually or whether you actually 
react the way the ego wants to, you're gonna feel bad, end up feeling bad on the long term. Because if you don't react either up to your inner child or to your ego, that already, we already established that that creates those negative self definitions and that makes you internalize whatever you experience. But if you react also to the ego and end up feeling bad on the long term, because it makes you take rash decisions, then you would also end up creating coping mechanisms to adapt to this badness you're feeling, to this regret you're feeling, to whatever you're feeling. A simple example would be that someone cuts you in line or someone blurt out some nonsense towards you, someone disrespects you in one way or another. The ego response here is would be that you feel enraged and you want to retaliate by this by a similar negative reaction by something even more negative by something worse you want to give them a piece of what they gave to you and that is the egoistic reaction and that's how it makes you feel and then you retaliate and you hurt that person and then it makes you feel bad on the long term but if you don't retaliate at all if you don't respond whatsoever and you just eat it all up and you go on living this now this scenario is a mild one it's not that much that big of a deal but you build that on top of another one and you keep doing that one time after another after another and it builds up but you could also take one extreme situation whatever it might be like some sort of abuse in, a, in all of its of different kinds emotional physical sexual whatever and that scars you if you do not respond the way you wanted to, maybe you did not even have the chance to respond the way you wanted to, because whatever happened in the past, like I said, it's not your fault. Because this is all part of our natural journey. This is all something that we were meant to experience, something that we had no control over whatsoever. But the problem is that we carry it on for the longest time of our lives. We carry it on into our adulthood and we keep limiting ourselves. We keep even doing the same thing because we've grown so accustomed to it. But in this simple example, you if you do not react whatsoever and you let it build and build and build, gradually it's going to be eating at your soul it's going to be eating your spirit it's going to be eating your creativity it's going to be eating from your power from your potential because you're going to keep reinforcing those negative self impressions those false definitions those negative self beliefs and self limitations that i'm powerless that i'm unworthy un that i'm worthless that i'm undeserving that i don't deserve love that i don't deserve joy that i don't deserve a good experience that i don't deserve whatever because as long as you do not respond, as long as you do not honor your inner child, the ego, it's going to make you feel good, just short term. But if you honor your inner child in this simple example, it would be something like expressing that what that person is not okay, that it's disrespectful. It's just simply stating, it's just simply making, taking a stance rather than just ignoring it and acting as if nothing happened but i'm coming to that in just a moment because there's more about that if you at this point just express that what that person did is not okay in modern times we call those boundaries you establish a boundary that that person if it's, it's that it's not okay what that person has done or has been doing and that you will not let it pass if it happens again you know just express that is your inner child and that empowers you if you express your truth if you honor your inner child in such situations you're gonna feel empowered and you're gonna feel good and you're gonna build good positive momentum because the more you do that whether with several mild situations or with one extreme situation your self beliefs are gonna change your self impressions are gonna change and you're gonna start feeling empowered you're gonna realize that you're empowering yourself you're gonna gain that confidence you're gonna feel more loved you're gonna be releasing all of those negative limiting self-beliefs that your brain has assigned for you because you are 
reversing the narrative. No, I'm not helpless. No, I'm not unlovable. I'm speaking out because I know that my worth, I know that, you know, I do not deserve this. And as you do this, you're gradually going to be taking yourself out of those negative self impressions and you're going to be replacing them with positive ones and you're going to be empowering yourself. And when you empower yourself, life empowers you. But maybe you truly don't feel a thing and you don't want to react because it's not bothering you whatsoever. Truly not bothering you. You're not faking it any longer. You're not acting it, but it truly does not bother you. But by that point, by then, if it really is not hurting you, if whatever situation, agitating or agonizing situation does not affect you, does not matter to you, it does not leave an impression and it, you do not end up internalizing it, then at that point, it means you have already healed your inner child, at least in regards to that specific scenario or to that specific situation and that would mean that you would also not have to force yourself to react in a way that honors your inner child because one that means that whatever truly resonates with you with your truth with whatever vision you have for your future is not something that you have to force, but it comes to you naturally by just being. You do not have to go against yourself. You do not have to force yourself to confront if it's needed at any point in your journey. You don't have to force yourself to let go of some coping mechanisms, to let go of some habits, but rather it comes naturally to you as part of your existence, as part of being. But to get there, you must have had honored your inner child at some point or at many points in your past and that's when it's healed or that you had a very functional childhood which is a rare thing and that's why if you are not at that point if you do not do things effortlessly if you are always having to struggle and force yourself to get things done to work in resonance, in harmony with your true inner self, then it means that you have to take it step by step and you have to start honoring your inner child because life is not about forcing, creating your reality, releasing those limitations. It's not about battling and fighting. Remember, it's not a fight. If it's a fight, then it's not the natural way. Yes, you might think, well, many people have done it have made it happen by forcing, by battling against themselves, by battling against whatever their natural inclinations are, their natural tendencies to make something happen. But the thing is, that's an egoistic construct and it's also momentarily. It's gonna feel good momentarily, but once the effect, which is the outcome they were pursuing happens, or they start seeing some hope, or it starts showing some sign of fulfillment, the cause, which is them forcing that thing to happen, starts also falling apart. So they stop and they revert back to their old self, which is their natural self, because they just forced and built and buried their, their, their wounds, their pain deep down. And they just kept fighting and fighting. And that's when it, once and once something happens once they achieve something they were looking for they revert so quickly to their old self and so does their outer reality so does their external reality because it has been creating but created by a cause that they are forced not by a natural process not by energetic alignment not by releasing truly what has been holding them back what has been preventing that reality from happening but in your true self, when you are truly healed, you understand that you don't have to react. You understand that you do not need to respond because whatever anyone is expressing towards you, it's just, if it's bad, if it's negative, if it's disrespectful, it's just a projection, a projection of their inner wounds. It's just a projection of who they are and it has nothing to do with you. That's 
where you know your true self, where you know your true worth, where you know what you truly deserve, that you are an extension of everything, that you deserve everything you want. But to get there, you have to honor your inner child for some time. You have to start honoring your inner child if you have not, if you have never been honoring your inner child, if you've, or if you rarely honored your inner child. You have to start doing it and you build that momentum gradually. You build that empowerment gradually. You start doing it one time, maybe another time. You don't have to, you know, act upon your inner child. But eventually what happens is that your inner child stops needing to react because you removed its repression. It's no longer repressed. It expressed its truth several times your inner child is just a construct is just a phrase used to express what you what you as a child what you needed as a child but you did not get what you deserved as a child but you did not get it's a phrase used to express the repression the contrast between what you as a child expected and what you got this is your inner child. Once that's resolved, you are resolved. You release that need and it becomes one with you. It does not want to do something. It does not feel the need to express itself because it's just a child. And once you give it, once you release that repression, once you let it express its truth for some time, for a few times, it understands that it's honored. It understands that it's loved. You as a child, you give yourself that love you needed as a child. You give yourself that empowerment you needed as a child. You give yourself that support, that hug, that explanation, that sense you needed as a child by honoring your inner child at this point. And by then, it just releases. It st just stops bothering you or pestering. I want this. I want this to happen that way. I want to react that way. I want to do this thing. I want to go to that place it stops because now it's not repressed and now it knows its true worth it knows that it's lovable it knows that it's deserving it knows that it's worthy it knows that it's it deserves whatever it wants so it stops and that's when you stop feeling the need to react to anything external whatsoever because you know that whatever anyone is whatever anyone is doing it's just an expression of them it's just a projection of wounds and wounds or whatever you are getting in your external reality does not define you does not determine your worth because you honored yourself you empowered yourself so you don't need anything external you don't need anything external to prove that any external validation and that's when you're able to start projecting who you truly are what you truly want that's when you release all your blockages and you're born in you and you project a new reality that's when you break the pattern and you create whatever reality you wish to create with that being said thank you so much for tuning in to another video by af's conscious frequency thank you so much for sharing this with me and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel because it helps me so much and it helps this video find its way to many more others who might actually need it.